Yeah, there's a little bit of change of pace here. Um, obviously, a lot of you people are in, involved in uh, mining. Uh, Keith Schaefer asked me to come to this uh, uh, today and talk about Wavefront, and I'm a very excited person about Wavefront. Obviously, one, because I'm the founder of Wavefront, or one of three, but also because of what Wavefront does and its opportunity to expand um, what we would say is the offset of peak oil. Uh, theory. Peak oil theory means that, you know, we really can't squeeze much more out of the ground. But with Wavefront's technology, we should be able to squeeze out uh, about 630 billion more barrels uh, worldwide. So, okay, so what do we do? So not only is uh, Wavefront involved in the oil and gas sector, but uh, we apply our technology also to the environmental sector for groundwater remediation. And we're just now looking into markets such as the uh, in-situ leaching market, that would be copper and uranium, as well as a geothermal market. And before I get off too far, I'm going to explain exactly what we do momentarily. Um, but again, we have a multi patented technology which we can use on multi-platforms. Uh, the biggest platform being the oil and gas sector. And I, uh, I know there's several people in the audience here who are actually Wayfront investors, and they would know that the story is of our stock is an up and down one. Um, if we look, at, look to that, uh, uh, in a few slides, you can see we've been as high as at one time in my history, $5, as low as 23 cents, and everywhere in between. Looking at us from a uh, officer's and director's point of view, uh, we have some pretty good uh, heavy hitters on our side here. We got, uh, starting at the bottom, moving up, John Zahari. John is, runs a company called Harvest uh, uh, Corporation. Uh, Harvest is mostly owned by the Korean National Oil Company. Uh, Jeff Sapunja is a private uh, Runs a private company called Triaxon. We got a former uh, chairman of BP, and we got a former vice president and chief environmental officer at General Motors. So, wide range of experience, uh, and these people come to Wavefront looking at the opportunity that the technology brings uh, for the sectors that we serve. Again, if you're looking uh, where we are, the profile of the company, and by the way, I have all this stuff on a memory stick at my booth outside if you want. Um, basic shares outstanding, roughly 82 million. Um, the big thing here is cash on hand. Um, we have a, about, uh, as at our last quarter, $25 million cash on hand. Uh, that was raised at $2.10 a year ago. So we're not out there looking for, to raise capital. We're, we're a well-financed company. Uh, we have yet to turn a profit, but we foresee that in a very near term. If you look at uh, growth, and this is where I talk about why I think we're going to be turning a profit soon. If you look at our commercial model, and what we do is we rent tools to oil companies who practice what they call improved or enhanced oil recovery. That would be injecting water, injecting CO2, maybe it's a polymer, maybe it's a surfactant. Going back to uh, 2007, we had three tools in the ground, and at that time, that client was announced in a news release was in Canada. Today, we have well over 125 tools in the ground, uh, with many tools pending to go in the ground. The breadth of our uh, installations are from Argentina to Oman to uh, Texas to California to all across Western Canada. So again, we have an international or a global technology and a global industry. Uh, again, this is just talking about revenue growth. We've experienced six consecutive quarters of revenue growth, and that's based upon the adaptation rate of our technology. Now let's get, get down to the crux of the problem which we solved. If I'm injecting something into the ground, it doesn't want to go in evenly. So think about it as a river on the surface of the earth. It meanders all over the place, and that's basically trying to find its path of least resistance. So if I'm trying to do secondary oil recovery, i.e. ejecting water, that water is going to go in under preferential flow paths. So it's not contacting all of the oil in place. The idea of injecting water is to displace the oil that's there. So if I look at from this perspective here, the stranded oil is the oil that's left behind. And uh, if you look at the US DOE, uh, they talk somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 billion barrels of stranded oil uh, in the lower 48 states. So there's a lot of oil left behind. Most people think we get a whole bunch of oil out of the ground, but here in Western Canada, let's say we might get 20% uh, of the heavy oils out of the ground, maybe 40% of the conventional. Uh, that means there's a lot of oil left to go back and get. So what get can we solve? So if I look at injection, normally on the left-hand side here is what they would normally do. So Water is finding its path of least resistance. On the right-hand side, all we did was change the way we introduced the fluid into the reservoir. Instead of it going in like a garden hose, let's say, we're now pulsing it, much like your heart beating. We're creating these pulses of fluid, and those pulses move that fluid outside of nature's path of least resistance. 
hence contacting a greater portion of the reservoir, leading to greater ultimate recovery. And when we talk about greater ultimate recovery, we're talking upwards of 10 or percent or greater more production from a field. So if, if I predicted a 40% recovery rate, I might get 50 or 60% now. Equate to that to, to money, and that's a lot of money in the bank for the operators. Okay, so basically think about it as the garden hose. What we do is we add energy to the injection phase. So if I have a garden hose at home, I was doing this yesterday myself, if I put a kink in the hose, what I do is I shut off the flow. I'm not adding pressure behind the kink, I'm adding energy, I'm storing energy. The city of uh, Vancouver doesn't know that Brett Davidson has a kink in his hose. He's, you know, the city's still going to deliver 55 PSI to my house. But what's happening behind the kink there is I'm storing the energy. When I undo the kink, I release the energy. I cause acceleration of the fluid. That acceleration is what leads us to get the fluid outside of nature's path of least resistance, which leads to all the wonderful things I was talking about of increased oil recovery. So if I look at what an oil company looks like, most flooding patterns are done in what they call a five spot. I have one injector, four or more producers surrounding it. And so if I look, we rent tools out, we don't sell tools, so we have a reoccurring revenue model. We rent them out for approximately $3,000 a month. If I look at this graph here, I would say if I have $45 net back oil, net back means everything after taxes, royalties, pay the landowner on my operating costs. $45 net back, I would need from that production pattern of four wells, uh, 3.29 barrels a day. That's really not too much for an oil company to break even on this. So let's look at some uh, uh, results. But if I now go to my model here, um, because we are licensing, um, if you look at the world market, again, there's about 200,000 wells worldwide that our technology is applicable to from an injection side. Um, we have just alone in the United States is about a half a million. Um, so, you know, if we're, we're getting in the round of the 200 mark, that should be about 72.2 million. If we get up around the uh, 20,000 mark, which is only 10% of the, of the whole industry, you know, you're up to $720 uh, million dollars worth of revenue. Our gross margin um, on our, because of our revenue model here, our gross margin is upwards of 85%. So what we do is we deliver a tool, oil company puts it in the ground, walk away, we collect a check. Okay, so if you look here, there's about uh, five examples from Western Canada, and you look at what their rate of uh, return of investment, their payback, their net cash flow a month. We obviously are bringing uh, some large value to these companies which is why we can see uh, a continuous expansion of programs within these uh, uh, companies. If you look at the Wainwright project, um, you know, we started there with three tools in 2007. Uh, we'll be upwards of 90 with them now, so they see the benefit. We see that going with Penn West, you know, we're looking at expansion with our program there and other places in the company. And this is, repeats itself no matter if I'm, again, in Canada, United States, and so on. I just happen to use uh, five examples from Western Canada. Uh, we'll just get on to uh, what this Wainwright project is, so um, I won't be too much longer. We have three, this is the original pilot where we had three wells. Uh, the three wells are denoted power wave one, two, and three. The green dots around the outside of it are production wells. And uh, the, again, the other blue dots are water injectors. If you look at this very complicated graph, you can see on the left-hand side before the vertical lines is what they call their production decline curve. It was declining at a rate of about 3.4% a month. On the right-hand side, it's about the four-year history of production after our tools are installed. It's basically slowed the rate of production decline to about 1% a month, which means we're extending field life, getting more resources for them. And you can see where the tools have been operationally stopped uh, from the operator standpoint and how much of an effect it has on production, which is why they continue to start them and add more tools. Um, where we come is we call oil cut. Generally speaking, if you're in an old water flood, you produce a lot of water. You might produce out of every barrel 98% water and only 2% oil, uh, which has obviously a great impact on the economics. So what Wavefront does by accessing the stranded oil and producing it, we change that game. We now start producing more oil again, and as we produce more oil, we again, we extend the field life. And that's the benefit that the oil company is looking for. Now, what are our key ingredients to growth? Well, obviously, the biggest one is having more tools in the ground. That's, that's fundamental. Uh, we have to continue to do that. We have to continue to leverage the positive results we got in a number of jurisdictions throughout the globe. Um, and we have to focus on controlling our operating uh, costs and uh, be very, very fiscally prudent. Um, 
One thing, as I said at the beginning, we have a very strong balance sheet. So, um, you know, we have, uh, if you look at our cash burn rate, our cash burn rate's about uh, half a million a quarter. So, it, you know, from 22 to $25 million in the bank, there's lots of money there to, to get to that cash flow positive. Um, and just looking at, uh, again, our investment highlights here. Um, we are the only company in the world that does what we do. There's some other companies that like to try to mimic what we do, uh, but we're the only company that does what we do. Uh, so we have a very compelling story from the standpoint of that. Um, we have results from various sectors, um, again, both the energy and the environmental. Um, there's lots of interest in what we do, and so we have a very uh, large growing uh, commercial pipeline of uh, customers. Um, Again, we have a committed management team right from the board of directors down to uh, and an execution team down to our technicians in the field. And uh, that's about it. If you have any questions for me or want to understand the oil industry anymore, I'll be outside. I'm more than happy to talk about Wavefront. Uh, it's, it's a passion of my life. And uh, that's it. And have a great day.